Thank you for watching My News 26. I'm Paula Jasper. Today we're in Cadillac, and joining me is Taryn Tomoski, a contracting officer for the Huron Manistee National Forest. Thanks for joining me, Taryn. Yes. Now, you literally just returned from fighting the fires out west. Tell me, how, how does someone even get called up to do that? What's the procedure? Well, I've been a qualified firefighter for about uh, 15 years now. Um, and so uh, when the fire season's out west, I uh, go through to our dispatch, local dispatch here, to uh, get my name on the list to, uh, to see what kind of qualifications that I have that matches up with what kind of qualifications that they need. And then is there a set time that you usually go for? Uh, yes, usually you go out for a two-week assignment. Um, I was uh, signed up to go out as a helicopter crew member because um, I was qualified to do that. And I left on August 5th, got back, uh, got out to Sacramento, uh, California on the Hay Fork incident, uh, which is called the Fork Incident, um, on the 6th, which would be my first day of work out there. Um, and it's a two-week assignment for 14 days. And I just got back. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. And tell us a little bit more about the fire. Uh, the fire I was on was uh, about 25,000 acres. It was actually a combination of four different fires. Uh, we had probably, the most we had in camp was about 2,400 people in camp. Um, we had uh, military, the National Guard was there with uh, some Chinooks and a couple Blackhawk ships that were doing a bunch of water drops. And we also had some, um, some uh, planes there doing some retardant drops on the fire. Oh, that must have been quite the experience. Um, what were camp conditions like? Um, camp conditions were very smoky. Um, we had uh, some problems flying. Uh, a lot of mornings, um, the smoke was so thick that we couldn't get the ships up, and so you had uh, winds changing uh, conditions. So, therefore, the fire was taken off, yet it was too smoky to get any um, aircraft up to, to really support that fire. Tell us more about your specific job. Um, my specific job is a helicopter crew member, so typically what we'll do is we'll um, start by setting up a helibase someplace. Um, for the helibase that we set up there in California, we had to get a land use agreement because there wasn't a good, any, uh, any good areas to do it on forest land, so we had to get a land use agreement through a landowner. Um, we had to get approval from him to cut trees because we need a, a nice big area to, to land the ships. Um, so basically that, uh, that was uh, pretty difficult to, to get all that ag agreement signed. And then after we got that all taken care of, then to get communications out there, because it's basically in the middle of nowhere, we have no, no communications at all. So we were able to get a trailer set up with some Wi-Fi communication and a, uh, and a phone line set up. Um, we were able to get a couple ships land there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we made it, made it much smoother out there once we got all that taken care of. Now, we use, use the word ships. Are you referring to helicopters? Yes, yes. We had okay. two, two helicopters land that we were basically managing. Um, one was a, uh, a light ship, um, and then one was called a medium ship. That They both have bucket capacity, and we also did some cargo where uh, there'd be crews up in the hills, so we put the cargo nets together, and then the helicopter would pick the cargo nets up with water and, you know, um, meal, meals ready to eat. Uh, we call them MREs and all that kind of stuff, and take that up to the, uh, the top of the mountain for those crews. Now, at the end of the day, when I'm assuming you've worked a very long shift, how is it determined that you were able to go safely get some sleep? Oh, it was difficult. Um, every night we get back to camp, it was very smoky. Um, we did have a pretty good caterer, so they did have a caterer there for meals. Um, they also had shower units. They brought shower units in and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, it was about an hour drive from the Hella base into camp um, on a windy road, so a lot of us got car sick, you know, <laughs> getting back to camp every day and driving through the fire. There was fire on both sides of the road getting back into camp every night so I'm assuming you were with men or women throughout the whole United States they came from all over uh, yes there was um, there were some people from um, a majority of the folks that I was with were from Minnesota there was a bunch of Minnesota Helitech folks that was with me um, but there was uh, there was fire engines from Los Angeles from um, San Diego I mean there's fire engines from all over California that were there on the on the fire now this isn't the first time you've done this then I uh, know this is um, oh probably about eight times now I've done it in my career so far oh, okay. well thanks for telling us about it Taryn yes no problem thank you Paula Jasper minus 26 in Cadillac